Hello, welcome to Gadgets 360. I'm your host Pranav Hegre and today with us we have Aiku India's CEO Nipal Maria. We also have Aiku's Senior Product Manager Shankar Singh Chauhan. Hi guys, thank you so much for giving some time to Gadgets 360 for this interaction around the Aiku 11 and also about talking about the brand in general. Nipun, I want to start first with you. Of course, it's the new year. Brands, of course, will launch new phones out there that will provide the latest and greatest for each and every consumer set out there. But before talking more about the IQ 11, I want to talk to you about the brand in general. Mm. IQ started with a very premium product in India. Mm. You came with the IQ 3, which was a premium offering at an affordable price. But then in 2020, 2021, we saw many phones in the premium segment. Mm. Last year, you launched the most premium phone, the iQOO 9 Pro. This is something that not many brands, new brands particularly tend to do. They start with budget phones in general, then they leave to the premium segment. I want your take on why the strategy particularly to cater to the premium segment first and not particularly start safe and cater to the budget and mid-range segment, which again is the most popular segment in India from a business point of view. Mm. So your take on that. Uh, see, it, uh, it comes uh, very simply from the basic fact uh, that what we want to offer to our consumers in India is uh, absolutely top level performance. Mm. Uh, what Aiku stands for uh, mm. is peak performance. All right. And we believe this peak performance can only and only come from us launching flagship level technology. Uh, and that technology starts from the processor, goes into the memory configuration, goes into the gaming feature, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, so if it is IQ, it is peak performance. And with that as the starting and the ending point, you know, we have our product portfolio. Now, this is something very different from your previous trend where you were heading the brand strategy for Vivo India. And Vivo is known to be and primarily offline, yeah. but also catering to the online set of consumers out there. Yeah. So how do you as the CEO of a brand new company, which again is a sub brand of an established company here in India, how does it, how do you basically take the decisions as to how do you position the brand? How do you launch products here in India basis, the discussions with various teams out there? So how do you decide on that? See, uh, one, it's a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you know, I am, uh, uh, this is new for me as well. Mm. Uh, so there is a lot of learning and unlearning mm. and relearning uh, that I need to do personally. Yeah. Uh, and that is what my endeavor is uh, these days. Uh, and then I have, uh, you know, strong colleagues like Shankar uh, who understand the consumer very well, understand technology and keep giving in the relevant feedback for us to take the right decision. But yes, you know, on your part, uh, for a lot, for a large part of my career, I was focusing more on offline. Now this is uh, sort of a transition for me. Yes. Aiku as a brand, although it's fairly new, yes, you launched many products in the uh, mid range and the premium segment, but uh, when it comes to making a presence felt, it's not as strong as your parent company Vivo. Yeah. So how is the company trying to work it out there? Because again, we've seen you partnering with the BCCI, we would rather sponsor the IPL as well. You were the title partner and that was primarily Vivo, but we did see a few Aiku holdings around the boundary line. Yeah. But other than that, how do you plan to make your presence stronger in, especially in the offline market in India? Okay. So, uh, see, I think uh, for us as a new brand, most important for us is to understand who our consumer is, uh, who's the people who's, uh, you know, who are really going to buy yeah. uh, iQOO. Uh, and there, uh, I think uh, in the last few years, we built some good understanding mm -hmm. of uh, who are the people who will prefer us, buy us, recommend us. Uh, and, you know, with that in line, uh, we understand the young students of India, you know, the young TG of India, uh, early jobbers. Mm. Those are really the kind of people who like to buy a phone like Aiku. Uh, and for them, you know, we have to do things which they like. Mm. Right. So as a young brand, you know, one of the things we did last year was partnering with uh, BGMI. Right. So so that again was a step in that direction. Mm. Uh, but having said that, uh, you know, where Vivo is today, uh, it's been over. And an effort which was put over seven years. Yeah. Right? So, so it takes time to build brand. Okay. Uh, and uh, we are cognizant of this fact that it will take time for us to build IQ as well. But it's important for us to be clear with uh, what IQ is, what mm. IQ is not. Uh, similarly, our consumer should be clear about what to expect from IQ. And once these two things are in place, I think with time, mm -hmm. uh, IQ hopefully will also be as strong a brand today as Vivo is. 
Now, speaking of performance, uh, you have your upcoming flagship, the iQOO 11. It's, you claim it to be the world's fastest Android smartphone out there. Uh, by the way, for our viewers out there, this is one of the two colors, the, uh, the legend, which again, we've seen in many iQOO phones out there. There's also the alpha color, which Shankar is showing you there. Nippon and Shankar, both of you, uh, how do you think the iQ 11 differentiates itself from the existing set of flagships out there? You have many phones in the premium segment now, but also the upcoming pl flagships. You have the OnePlus 11 coming up. You have the Samsung Galaxy S23. Again, each phone out there caters to a different set of target audience, but you your phone has a few USBs as well. One of which you claim is the world's fastest Android smartphone out there. Yeah. But other than that, of course. Yes. What? How do you think the phone differentiates it, itself, especially in a very premium segment? How? Do, because it's certainly an all-rounder, yes. But what are the key USPs that help the phone take it a notch higher compared to the competition there? Sure. So I'll let Shankar answer this question yeah. first and then I'll pitch in. Okay, so first of all, I uh, just want to mention, uh, compared to the differentiation, uh, we are coming with a many first. So first, like India's first 8 Gen 2. And we also coming with uh, India's first 2K E6 AMOLED display. We are also coming with uh, the, the different design, which you can see mm -hmm. the PMW inspired yeah. design. And I think these are the factors which uh, we think that make us differentiate from the competition. But as far as the uh, available uh, range in this uh, in this price available phone in this price range, so we think that we have all the specification which is different from this uh, from the competition. And uh, and we are. I mean, we are very ready for consumer to experience all this. And I think, yeah, that's all uh, iQOO 11 is all about. Yeah, see, I want to add one thing here, mm -hmm. which is, you know, I've been using this uh, phone now for uh, for some time. Mm -hmm. And uh, while I have been using, while on paper, you know, specs wise, this phone seems to be very powerful, like all the other iQOO phones. But one thing which I really liked uh, in this phone is the hand feel, is the grip. Uh, where, uh, where you know, with a lot of phones, especially with glass backs, uh, some phones tend to be a little bit more slippery, mm. right? So yeah. you, you don't get a you know very confident feel uh, when you are using the phone because every time you're scared of dropping the phone, right? And sometimes you put on a cover, but uh, you know there are advantages and disadvantages of putting a cover. Yeah. So, so here, uh, what I really like is the experience more than yes, of course it's powerful, it's you know fully loaded, uh, it's you know truly a monster inside. Uh, but uh, I think the feel of the phone is really exceptional. Okay. Now, I have a follow-up question to this, which is around, firstly, how does Nippon as the CEO, and it's, I know it's a mix of one of the previous questions, but then how does Nippon as a CEO decide with the local and global teams as to what products they should be bringing into India? Particularly why? Because uh, you've already confirmed that the 11 Pro is not coming to India. Yeah. And last year we saw the uh, iQOO 9 Pro, yeah. which was among, in fact, it was one of my favorite phones in the particular segment there. Mm. But why not the 11 Pro? Because we've already had its predecessor here in India, at least. Mm. We did get the 10 in the form of the 9T here. Mm. But what about the 11 Pro as to why you're not bringing it to India, at least as of now? Yeah. So, uh, see, again, the thinking was very clear. Uh, somewhere, you know, we also have to rationalize uh, the the products we are uh, launching mm -hmm. and we we have to do uh, a check on uh, on one side what is the real consumer demand uh, and therefore what are the consumers expecting uh, from us on the other side uh, looking at all the possible situations right from you know uh, investing money in terms of r d into each product that we launch mm -hmm. to manufacturing the product you know to doing the whole thing uh, it really should uh, you know, should be uh, should make sense from all quarters. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we felt that for our consumers, if we can give you know India's first display, which is mm -hmm. the two K E yeah. six one forty four hertz display, if we can give them Snapdragon eight Gen two, right, uh, and give them some of the other features that we are going to provide in this phone, we think it will be a a very powerful package mm -hmm. uh, for our consumer. Because again, you know, for uh, for our consumers, for a lot of young people. Uh, they, what they really care about is can I get the top of the line specs? You know, I don't want to buy, say, for example, a display which is one year old technology. I don't want to buy that, right? So, so if you are really passionate about buying the latest innovative products, uh, then, uh, then Aiku is for you, right? And, and with that in mind, we thought, you know, E6 plus 8 Gen 2, uh, along with the V2 chip, 
you know that we have which really enhances your gaming and photography experience this phone will really suffice all the possible you know needs and scenarios of our consumers therefore we thought you know this will be the right phone for us to watch nikun you've been specifying offering the great latest and greatest of hardware that consumers yeah. should be able to use here in yeah. india at least shankar i want to ask you about the software front because i believe software actually complements the hardware even if it's the best of hardware right if the software is not up to the mark or if it's not optimized for the hardware right. consumers are not going to get the best of experience out there right uh and again there's this uh, typical notion that fun touch os which is basically a part of iq 11 it's the software that the software skin that is running the iq 11 mm-hmm. uh it's not up to the mark is what many people often say especially the critics out there uh we too feel that there are areas where fun touch os lags compared to other operating systems out there that you get from competitive rival brands how do you as a product team uh take feedback from consumers and what is your take on the criticism around fun touch os in general we've seen it come a long way but there is room for improvement is what many often say so how do you react to such criticism see i think this is uh i mean uh, we can say this is a hot topic for uh, a fun touch os specifically yes. so i just want to mention that uh, being a new brand and a small team we are taking a step by step uh, process to solve all the queries related to fun touch os and we also get a lot of queries from consumer we talk to consumer as well so just want to mention that few of the points that we are solving and we are in a process to solve this first first of all people required the uh, i use a longer period of android updates and yeah. security patches so with 90 and now with iq 11 also we are providing 3 year, uh, four, three years of android update and four years security compared to the previous 2 plus 3 and the second thing is uh, our track record is also very good we are providing monthly patches right and the third thing is from the bloatware side uh, people do feedback us uh, feedback about that uh, some unwanted app that we have already in pre installed we also remove that pre installed apps some of the apps you might have seen that and uh, the, the last part is that uh, from the uh, the applications uh, that uh, we were providing how we can actually hide those apps it's very easy process for a mom mm-hmm. side that we had provided so that you can it's not a it's not a very difficult task to remove all this it's just very simple click that you can do and remove all this and to make it clean and uh, one more thing i want to add recently that uh, it was a good thing that from consumers are they want android stock android experience mm-hmm. so what we have done is that we have uh, implement the ui color and uh, customization and all this android uh, ui customization and then over ui customization we can do with our ui color option that we have added recently okay. So yeah, so these are the point that we have added, and we are going to improve going forward. In fact, this is something in line with Android 13 and Android 12's color palette yeah. that we just were talking about. And uh, again, this is something that we will obviously cover in the full review. But then I also noticed that uh, Fanta chose. I think I'm not sure, but it I think is it is the only skin that provides users the option to create an additional profile other than your primary. You can create a user if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So, uh, I- I mean, I will check all the competition, yeah. but yeah, as far as uh, the UI concern, we are yeah. providing this. I, I, but I just I'm gonna state my favorite features, of course, in the full review. So do check that out once it's live on Gadget 360. But Shankar, I also want to touch upon two areas which again were among the highlights in the teaser so far. One is the design. Uh, you're launching the phone, the iQOO 11, with two different materials. One is the glass back that we often see in premium phones right. the other is this leathery finish that is very rare in this particular segment we've seen vivo launch a couple of phones in this with this particular back a uh, leather finish uh of course i like it i feel it's equally premium but why do companies refrain from launching phones with a leather back and why does iq in particularly have it uh, why does why is rather vivo and iq being very aggressive about leather backs in general Hmm. Sure. Okay, it's not about aggressiveness, but I I still feel that uh, for consumer uh, they should not feel that it should be the same pattern mm-hmm. that we are following, right? And also this they should have something new mm-hmm. uh, in the phone. So uh, starting from the design, uh, we followed the uh, the racing style, mm-hmm. but we have changed some premium things from this. For example, uh, we have a cloudy Paris pattern. We also have silicon leather. Mm-hmm. So talking about silicon leather. Uh, 
is basically perfectly fit in hand and also uh, why we have used is because you have seen the car the bmw and motorsport car inside there is a, a leather finish which looks premium so that's why we feel that we can replicate that and uh, we do also inspire from this and silicon leather is also from stream free so mm -hmm. no need to worry about this that's why we are used okay the second one is actually a first for any iq phone which is the v2 chip right we've seen the v1 and the v1 plus chip in vivo phones uh in india and international markets right uh the v2 chip is coming here in india on an iq device for the very first time what are the improvements that one can expect with the inclusion of this new custom isp uh, the image signal processor that vivo has added in this particular phone and first of all uh we did use this v1 plus chip in iq90 okay and at that time also we were continuously promoting that uh, this uh, we can get the benefit of game frame interpolation and games okay. and also some night photography and videography but this time with iq11 we are using v2 and v2 has some major improvements just like now we can go uh, up to 144 fps in game frame in games some games like genshin impact and the second thing is the major upgrade is that in low light photography and videography for example videography now you can shoot in 4k okay. so previously you won't be able to do that because in low light scenario you won't get much brightness and also noise reduction but with v2 the difference is that you can now shoot it 4k in night video so that's a benefit for consumers so basically it unlocks the new new possibility so basically the new v2 chip basically helps with gaming helps with display and also helps with camera performance yes okay interesting mm -hmm. now we saw many z series smartphones the z6 z6 pro z6 light 5g the z6 light 5g is among the most affordable phones with 5g in india right now uh in 2023 do you see iq as a brand being a lot more bullish across price segments or are you going to just focus on the mid range and the premium price category yeah so see for us we have three uh, series right now mm. uh, in india uh, we have the z series uh, we have the neo series mm. and we have the flagship yeah. uh, series so we intend to uh, continue launching products in all the three series okay uh, because we believe there are consumers across all price points uh, not everybody wants to spend a 30k mm. 40k and upwards on on a phone so accordingly we will be launching uh, new products in all the three series okay. uh, in 2023 as uh one more question was around in fact this is something that companies have struggled around a lot which is the whole supply chain issue primarily which kick started due to the pandemic and of course uh the inflation getting worse and worse every day with the dollar strength thing against the rupee how does the company basically take on such challenges and how does it affect the course of action because you have you already have plans in place that okay these are the products that you're launching in 2023 yeah with things being so dynamic yeah some worse than be being better uh how does the company react to such situations in general and if there is any change if you can just give us a brief about any such incidents that happened occurred in the recent past okay so uh, see Pranav, uh, you know in this case whenever you know we are running a business mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when there are or dependencies uh, across geographies yeah. you know these things uh, do happen mm -hmm. and it's not the first time uh, that uh, uncertainties uh, have uh, crept in into the business uh, for 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 the last for the last few years mm -hmm. uh, there have all, there have been so many ups and downs uh, and what i believe is that you know through proper planning and uh, good execution mm -hmm. Uh, we should be able to overcome you know these hurdles as well uh, you are right you know right now uh, there is a covid situation in china uh, but some time back it was in india yeah. right uh, and uh, during during india and china uh, covid situation there was you know this uh, russia ukraine crisis mm -hmm. the commodity prices yeah. the oil prices so something or the other you know is yeah. is happening and uh, and we you know we have our own ways of of dealing with them planning better you know executing our plan so i think that's what we need to do by any chance uh does having local assembly help a lot come to tackle yes. these issues yes absolutely absolutely and we are very proud uh, of the fact that you know all the iqo phones that we are selling uh, are all being you know made here in india uh, in the vivo factory mm -hmm. uh, so uh, so therefore you know it certainly helps uh, that you know we can make the phones here in india now again uh 
a couple of closing questions here. Firstly, does IQ have any ambitions uh, or resources as to how it can differentiate itself from other companies out there, especially your own parent company Vivo? Because Vivo, as we know, is among the leading companies when it comes to experimenting a lot with design, mm -hmm. whereas IQ is all about performance. But then again, your DNA also includes design and yeah. overall performance. Yeah. So how do you plan to basically you do you plan to invest in resources to ensure that you differentiate your, yourself from not just your parent brand, but other companies out there as well? Absolutely. Uh, and I think differentiation happens both uh, at the external level as well as the internal level. Uh, you know, a little bit I'll touch upon and then maybe Shankar can also add more on this. So, see, when it comes to internally, you know, as I shared earlier, uh, any IQ phone that you buy, uh, you can be rest assured that that IQ phone is going to deliver the best, you know, when it comes to performance and, you know, overall package mm. uh, in its respective price segments, right? We we did that with the IQ Neo 6, mm. you know, with the, with the Z6 Pro, with the IQ 90, right? And these were all very good phones in their respective price segments. Uh, and in 2023 also, uh, we intend to continue that. So, so therefore, whether it is internal or even external, right, on the design front as well, uh, some of our phones have really been, you know, very smart looking phones. Uh, so you're right, you know, when you're buying a phone, you don't just look at the outside or yeah. only the inside. Uh, you want a complete package. Uh, and that complete package is certainly something we'd like to uh, you know, provide. Even say the whole BMW mm -hmm. uh, collaboration, right? Uh, so it is really a collaboration, which is, which is such a long lasting collaboration. I don't think in the whole industry, there is any other case where a collaboration has lasted for so long you know, with, with an auto brand. In fact, that is something that I wanted to touch upon. Yeah. Uh, you've been the only brand that has basically partnered with some uh, company that is not related to any smartphone industry for that matter. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see that collaboration extending to more series that you the other two series that you have other than your flagship series there's also the neo series i do not expect the z series but of course you can surprise our uh, viewers and the consumer base out there do you think that there could be an extension in the future about uh your iQOO phones getting the bmw inspired colors in general yeah see uh again uh, what we uh, really believe in is that partnerships have to be strategic uh, partnerships, you know, we are able to deliver a lot to our consumers through these partnerships. Mm. Uh, so, and therefore with the BMW partnership, you know, what we're able to provide is really exceptional design, uh, right? Uh, with the uh, racetrack inspired, yeah. uh, uh, at the back, Stripes, design yeah. at the back. So, so this is one thing that we are uh, doing. Uh, and similarly for Neo also, uh, mm. you know, we are looking for some interesting partnerships if they okay. can come across and, you know, we'll certainly uh, give it to all our friends. Speaking of Neo, uh, I'm assuming you already know what I'm going to ask, but Shankar or Nippon, when is the Neo 7 coming to India or if it is actually coming to India? <laughs> so it's a, uh, you know, it's a uh, tough and a tricky question. Uh, so the Ico Neo 7, uh, we really can't confirm okay. when uh, right now. Uh, but yes, you know, we should have it. Okay. Uh, this is what. Uh, you know, I can tell you right now. Yeah, because the Neo 6 was among the well-received phones, at least from the reviews and the, from the industry folks. Uh, we do uh, definitely have it in our top phones under 30K. Mm -hmm. So we are definitely looking forward to the Neo 7. We actually want to see which particular phone, because there are three phones in China. We're curious to see which one is coming to India. But again, Nippon, closing thoughts on your brand strategy for 2023 and what can consumers expect in general from IQ? Yeah, so uh, see, I, uh, for the last two years, actually, uh, from you know whatever initial surveys, internal surveys we've done, uh, IQ has amongst the highest uh, user satisfactions mm -hmm. across all brands. Yeah. Right? So, so that's most important for us. Uh, keep our existing users very happy yeah. uh, and satisfied. So, as Shankar also mentioned, it's about you know updates, uh, giving very regular software updates, right? yeah. whether it's security patches or full Android version updates. So, we will keep giving those, right? Uh, keep improving the product, uh, both on the hardware and on the software, so that you know our existing users feel fully happy and satisfied with whatever they are getting, you know, inside their phone. Uh, and on top of it, you know, build uh, our uh, our brand promise of latest and the greatest and the fastest. Uh, so I think that's what we'll get. Shankar, uh, do you see Aiku launching any products other than phones in India? We have seen the gaming pad here in India, but mm. anything else 
be it wearables, IoT products or anything that complements the smartphone experience for our consumers here in India? So actually we have already launched many products okay. uh, related to gaming and we are still exploring that what can be the possible way but still it depends on the consumer requirement. If we feel that consumer really like and want to have some other IoT products definitely mm. we look out for it and that's the point. Okay. I think that's all for this interaction. Thank you so much, Nippon and Shankar, for giving us time. Uh, that's all for this particular episode. Do stay tuned for the full review of the IQ 11, which will be up very soon on Gadgets 360. Thank you. <laughs>